Praise God. Praise God. Welcome again, everybody, to the Back to Basics Ministries um, Bible Study, where tonight we're continuing with our lesson, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. This is going to be a mighty subject, a mighty subject, as we spend the month of April studying this powerful subject, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to be looking at a great book by the late Dr. A. W. Tozer. Dr. Tozer wrote a book, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, he just lays it out there, and he just looks people right eyeball to eyeball, lets them know why they need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then goes to pro expound upon this subject. So we're going to be looking at this uh, a little bit later on, and... Um, it's a great book to have, a great book to know, and it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, book to um, use in our study. Praise God. You can get this book. You can download it free from Kindle. Uh, I'm using a Kindle um, copy. If you are a Kindle uh, client, you can either rent this or you can download it for free. It costs me 98 cents to download this book. 98 cents, ladies and gentlemen, for this great book. And we give uh, all the credit to A.W. Tozer. Um, we do not own the copyright for this book. We give all the credit to A.W. Tozer. And A.W. <clears throat> Tozer wrote a lot of books. I've downloaded several of his books. I'll be studying them and reading them in the next several weeks. Uh, now that we have more time to read, uh, these are difficult days that we're going through uh, with uh, the uh, coronavirus touching a lot of people. Plus, uh, in addition to the coronavirus, we've got this, it's allergy season down here, the pollen season <clears throat> down in Georgia. So you hear my voice raspy. That's because of that yellow stuff in the air. So, but praise God, he's the healer. Richard Smallwood, Smallwood saying, there's a healer. There's a specializer. He specializes in healing. There's no situation he cannot heal. And uh, we were saddened today. Jackie received news of one of her <coughs> best friends who passed today. So you may see her in the chat window, and you may not. Um, but a lot of people are leaving here and the numbers are mounting but we're not alarmed believers are not alarmed we continue to promote Jesus Christ and to keep the word out before the body of Christ the word of God says in Isaiah 26 3 thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee so we keep our mind on the Lord Jesus yes we're saddened with uh, the deaths of people happening around us and across this nation and even the world. And um, we're saddened by the, the bell tolling for the victims of the coronavirus. But we believers must continue to go forth, praise God, and to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And that's who he is. He is Lord and he's king of kings and lord of lords, and no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. No, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Not even death shall prosper, because Jesus won the victory over death. And as we look forward to a Sunday morning celebrating Easter, uh, Jesus rising from the dead, we also know that the grave will not hold us, uh, death will not hold us. Uh, to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. So Christians are in the celebratory season. We have something to rejoice about. We've got something to shout about, Dr. Jean Bratton. We've got something Thank to shout you. about, Lisa Johnson. We have something to tell the world about. And they say, oh, you're crazy. Yes, I am crazy. I own up to my craziness because without uh, this craziness, I could not exist. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied every yeah. groan. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. I say, you don't yeah. know like 
I know what he's done for me. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, arrogant, but I'm going to push you aside. Uh, move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. Move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. And when we move over, when we get self out of the way, when we get self out of the way and claim the scriptures, claim the scriptures and move over and let the Holy Ghost take over, there's no weapon that can be formed against us that will prosper. No situation that God cannot handle. And then during this time of quarantine and lockdown and shut in, it's a great time for many of you, uh, many of you who are listening to this recording, many of you in other nations, this is the time to draw yourself closer to the Lord. Shut yourself in. Turn that TV off. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in worship. Spend time in praise. And we're finding that a lot of the stuff we've been doing every day doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Going to the mall every day and spending a few dollars that we have. It really doesn't matter. And and, and all that stuff that, you know, that uh, took up our time, got to run here, got to run there, got to do this, got to do that, you know, and, and, and you're even cutting your vehicle a little break. Your vehicle, vehicle's getting a break, not on the road every day. And, and so we are, are learning that God is there. He is there. And, and, and just... Uh, Enjoy the Lord. My daughter in um, Columbia, Maryland, sent put on Facebook today, she has daffodils growing in her yard. She's taking time to enjoy the daffodils. And down here in Georgia, we're taking time to enjoy the uh, white dogwood and the pink dogwood and the forsythia, the yellow forsythia and the azaleas. We've got pink azaleas in our yard. And so uh, we just praise God. We just thank God. Uh, Got greens in the garden left over from our winter garden and getting ready to plant seeds for the spring garden. So it's a time of renewal, a time of refreshing. Yes, there is disaster all over the world, but Jesus is still and always be Lord. He has not abdicated his throne. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. So we invite you to focus your attention on the Lord. Isaiah 26, 3, ladies and gentlemen, says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. So keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord, and the Lord will keep you in perfect perfect peace. We're going to ask Dr. Bratton, our, 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 our assistant, uh, to lead us in prayer as we get ready for tonight's study. Amen. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. Lord, we come to you. Father, we thank you for all the amazing things that you have done for us. We thank you for your eternal love that is on us, Father God, in the midst of, Father God, bad times, but it's also with us every time. So may everyone who is logged on be blessed as we are guided and follow the Christian path and the Christian way of life. May each thing we learn here tonight help us grow and learn as Christians so that we may bring your light into the dark world. Father God, we just Thank you for Apostle Carter and his wife, Jackie, who facilitate this learning, Father God. And we just, Father God, ask and request on their behalf that you provide for their every need. Father God, and also comfort Jackie, Father, because, Father, we know that you know just how to wrap your arms around her and let her know that her friend is in a good place. Because I believe, Father God, that she's saved and she's with you because Jackie is a saved woman who follows your path. And we lift this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton. And uh, we praise God. Thank you for your prayer. And ladies and gentlemen, we give a shout out to all of you all over the nation and to those who are listening to the recording as you turn your attention to, to learning. Uh, why it's important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to spend the next two 
uh, weeks doing this and um, show you how to get filled. And then uh, probably after that, we go into what to do now that you're filled. And, 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 and what to do. Now, what to do with this gift and, and how to operate as a Christian with this gift of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to spend a little bit of time. Um, we're going to um, really teach some real uh, vital subjects to the body of Christ in the next several weeks so that God's people can grow and God's people can operate in what God wants us to do. So let's turn our attention <coughs> to A.W. Tozer who's the writer of the book, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. A.W. Tozer was born in 1897, and he died in, in 1963. It is said that A.W. Tozer never owned a car, never owned a car. He and his wife took buses and, and, and uh, taxi cabs everywhere they went. <clears throat> so he never owned a car. But he was a great man, and he touched a lot of people's lives. And he wasn't, he wasn't one of these you know, ministers out there hungry for money. Money. He gave all of his money away. He, he, I mean, he gave everything he had. He would give away to other people. So uh, he not only talked the talk, but he walked the walk. In his book, um, and we're looking at the table of contents. I have this up on the screen. Uh, who is the Holy Spirit, chapter 1. Notice it does not say what is the Holy Spirit. Dr. Tozer goes through explaining to us the difference between it and he. When you're talking about the Holy Spirit baptism, you're talking about it. But when you're talking about the person, the Holy Spirit, he is a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, <clears throat> and God the Holy Spirit. And each of them is equal. Um, the triune God, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We address the Holy Spirit as He. Then, uh, chapter 2, the promise of the Father. The Father, God the Father, promised everyone who believes in Jesus the Holy Spirit. You must be born again in order to receive the Holy Spirit. The moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. But then uh, God says to us in several parts of Scripture that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. He is our fuel, our energy. Uh, he is the one who guides us in the life Jesus even even said, "I must. It's expedient that I go away, but I'll come again, and 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 um, he that. said, I will come again, but I will send the Comforter. He will guide you into all truth, and the Comforter, the Holy Spirit that Jesus talked about, has a will. He has intelligence. He has feeling. He has knowledge. He has sympathy. He has the ability to love. He." has the ability to see, to think, to hear, speak, and desire. <clears throat> so when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that means your spirit must move over and let Jesus take over. Uh, in other words, there are things that we desire that we've got to let these things go. And one major question that Dr. A.W. Tozer asked in his book, he asked the question, he, uh, he says, before you are filled with the Spirit, are you sure you can be filled? That's a powerful question. Are you sure you can be filled? And so when he asked that question, are you sure? Because there are many people in the body of Christ who are still selfish, who still want to have things their way. And you cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit and insist on doing things your way. No preacher, no pastor, no bishop, no uh, uh, believer, no matter who you are, you cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit and insist on doing things your way. 
You see, God is almighty. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He knows the plans. He told Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. And so when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, then we've got to yield to God's plans. There are things we want to do. There are things we desire to do. And there are things that we think we have to do. But if they are not in the will of God, we've got to let them go and be led by the Spirit of God. The scriptures, so what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm just laying a foundation, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And so there are a lot of people who are saved. <clears throat> yes, they're saved, but their works have run up against a brick wall. Many Christians are frustrated. Many pastors are frustrated. Many believers are frustrated. Many marriages are frustrated. You see this during this coronavirus uh, pandemic where a lot of people are shut in now and, 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 and uh, 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 domestic abuse is on the rise and people are hating on one another. I mean, these are people, men and women, who promise, I will love you till the cows come home, baby. I, now that's old. That's old. Hey, Karen, that's old school. That is old school. That came out of Central Pennsylvania, Karen. I love you till the cows come home, baby. And 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 or or I never stop loving you. Or I sure love me some you and all this and uh, and. Uh, but now a lot of people who made all those promises are realizing that uh, those promises don't hold up. Do not hold up at all. So let me uh, for fast forward to um, a location here with uh, Dr. Tozer's book. See if I can get to 264. And those of you who have the book, uh, let's go there with me. The page not found, so I got to fast forward until I get there. Okay, but we'll get there. Okay, I want to just spend some time reading some of his, the things that he says in here. But let me go back to this thing about love. I mean, baby, I love you till the cows come home, or I'll never leave you, or I'll, I won't forsake you. And ladies and gentlemen, you get something like a shut-in, like caused by the coronavirus, and, and you know, uh, egos are clashing, and, and, and personalities are clashing, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, this bed's not big enough for both of us. All of, a sudden, all of a sudden, the bed's not big enough for both of us. Or you got my covers on your side. And, uh, uh, you need to go. And there are even preachers, preachers' wives, preachers' wives or preachers' spouses saying, I wish somebody would call you out to, to go out and preach somewhere today. I wish you had a, 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 a service somewhere today. So we've got to put up with each other, love one another, be patient with one another, Amen. Somebody out there say amen. Can I get an amen from somebody? Okay. I didn't really hear anybody, but... Uh, amen, somebody. Okay, there, there you go. There you go. The church, okay, I heard amen. it. Amen. <laughs> I heard it from the church. I heard it from the church. Amen. Praise God. So let's be patient with one another. Let's love one another. And let's not forget who we are and, um, and whose we are. And so uh, just in reviewing last week's, last week's lesson, <clears throat> we looked at the Holy Spirit is not matter. He's a spirit. Matter can only go but so far. Matter cannot penetrate matter. Just like um, um, we are matter and and. This, the house we're in is matter, uh, but the spirit, the a spirit can penetrate matter. And I was just thinking the last couple of days, you know, this coronavirus is a spirit. It's not matter. It's a spirit, and so it's penetrating uh, uh, even where uh, people don't want it to penetrate. And so a spirit can penetrate matter. That's why the Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your neighbor is not your enemy. Your spouse is not your enemy. It's a demonic spirit. It's a power. It's a principality. 
a ruler spirit, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We preached about that on Sunday and what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost. And so the Holy Spirit is a spirit. He can penetrate. <clears throat> there is nothing that can block the Holy Spirit from doing what God wants to do. Okay? The only thing that can really block the Holy Spirit from what he wants to do in your life is your attitude. So we must have a teachable spirit and a humble attitude, and we've got to want to be filled. And so a lot of us, um, before we continue our teaching about being filled with the Holy Spirit, um, a part of my job in the next couple of weeks is to show you and convince you, as I teach myself, I'm teaching the choir also, that many of us have blocked the flow of the Holy Spirit because we have been taught ignorantly. Ignorance abounds in many of us because we've listened to the wrong people. We've sat under pastors who didn't know. We've sat under bishops who didn't know. We sat under mama and papa. They didn't know. They heard stuff as they were coming along, and they did not know the scriptures. And so one of the main things we're dealing with in, in Christianity today is ignorance, tradition. It's, it's called, a lot of it is called tradition. There's a lot of traditional stuff that is just plain ignorant, and it has no place in the body of Christ. But yet we still uh, uh, perpetuate the ignorance. And in perpetuating the ignorance, we block the Holy Spirit from flowing and doing the great things that he wants to do. For example, the Bible says, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so a lot of people are saying, well, they won't let you in the, in the hospitals and you can't go into a room. And so the, that, that just throws that scripture out the window. No, no, it does not. No, it does not. You can get someone healed by telephone, talking to them on the telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, I've laid hands on a lot of people over the phone. I've laid hands uh, over the phone by proxy, uh, uh, just uh, speaking, the, and speaking the word of God over the phone, and people have gotten healed. The Bible says we can cast out demons. You don't have to rush to the hospital and cast spirits out of people. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. All you've got to do is believe God. And if the person you're ministering to believes God, boom, zip, boom, they're healed. They're delivered. And so we walk by faith and not by sight. And when we empty ourselves of our own ignorance, our own, those things that we've allowed to pile up inside of us that have no spiritual meaning, when we get rid of that and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to take over, we shall see great and mighty things happening in this nation, in other nations, even in our own households. And so uh, uh, we're gonna, we talked last week, and we'll talk about it just a little bit this week, and then next week, and then the fourth week in April when we finalize this uh, the series. Present your bodies to him. Do what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. If you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got to present your body to him. God is not going to fill you with the Holy Spirit if you still insist on smoking cannabis. Because what you're saying is cannabis is your God, and you're not trusting in the Holy Spirit. Or uh, you're not going to uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit if you, if you insist on popping CBD pills, and that's that new derivative from the uh, cannabis plant. Or you're not going to uh, be, be spiritual if, 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 if you've got to have that wine. There are some, pe some people got to have that wine every day. Got to have that glass of wine before you go to bed. Well, my doctor prescribed it. Well, hey, the doctor prescribed it, but uh, some of you need to leave that wine alone. Need to leave that alcohol alone. Need to leave that six-pack alone. Uh, need to leave that dope alone. Uh, uh, there are some of you got to have that, you know, got to have that sex. Got to have that uh, sex with, with somebody else's husband. That can kill you. Uh, somebody else, else's wife, that can kill you. Sex with the same sex, that will kill you. Uh, how can you be filled with the Holy Ghost and you're married to a man? And you're a man. 
How can you be filled with the Holy Ghost and you're married to a woman? Now look here, look here. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go any further, there are perpetrators in the body of Christ. And many of you know them. You know who some of them are. I know, I know uh, gays and lesbians who speak in tongues. And, and, and people think they're spiritual because uh, they claim they've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and they speak in tongues. Well, even the devil speaks in tongues. The devil knows how to duplicate a tongue, ladies and gentlemen. So <clears throat> we have to test the spirits by the spirit. Give me a, uh, you, you, I know that's right, Gene Bratton. Karen, you out there? I sure am. <laughs> we know people. We know we've met people in our walk with Christ. They can duplicate our uh, tongues language. They got their own language, and and they can and they can this and that. They get in front of the pulpit, get in front of crowds, and they uh, some of them can even lay hands on people and they get slain in the spirit. But then those same people go back, and 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 and, and the pastor goes back to sleeping with his man, uh, who's his wife, and 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 uh, or the female minister goes back sleeping with her woman, who is a woman, her uh, 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 husband, who's a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not mocked, nor is he deceived. And Satan can deceive a lot of people. So we've got to be true to God, walk with God. Test the spirits by the spirit. Do what John, uh, First John tells us. First John, uh, read that fourth chapter. Test every spirit by the spirit, and, and know what is of God and who's not God. So present your bodies to Him, obey Him. Uh, the Holy Spirit's not going to operate if we're not obedient. If we just want to get the Holy Spirit baptism so we can show people that we can speak in tongues or we can prophesy or we can interpret tongues or we can give somebody a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. A lot of people are going on Facebook these days and on the social media. They've got all of a sudden we've got buku numbers of people. They've got a word of knowledge for somebody, a word of wisdom for someone. Uh, uh, we're, I'm seeing more and more of my friends doing online ministry now. Uh, and a lot of these folks were laughing at me two years ago, three years ago. Now they're saying, hey, I don't have an opportunity to stand before a congregation, so I better get online. i got to have me an audience. Well, th that's good. But then there are some who are genuine, and they're doing great works. Praise God. But if, 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 if God leads you to do this, be obedient to him. Don't present yourself to people one way and then in your private life you're a snake and you're full of anger and full of, bit, full of bitterness and you're just a mean-spirited person or you're living a secret life. No, if you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and God knows who's filled and who's not and he wants every believer to be filled, but you've got to meet some criteria. Present your body to him as a living sacrifice. God's not going to fill you with his spirit if, if you choose wine and alcohol over God. God's not going to fill you with the Holy Spirit if you choose adultery over him or idolatry. So obey him and have faith. You can't be filled with the Holy Spirit and be spreading seeds of doubt and unbelief. We've got to walk by faith. We've got to walk by faith when the whole world is running in a health of skelter in fear. We walk by faith. And uh, as, as Pastor George Hilton said many years ago, uh, walk by faith so that you not, do not have to run in fear. Walk by faith, you will not have to run in fear. Okay. Uh, some other points to keep in mind as we continue this study. The Holy Spirit is a living person. He's a living person. He is not an it. Now, you hear so many people, and I had one man uh, uh, send me a message this week, and he said uh, he enjoyed the online church service, but he said he, he really loves his own church so he can be with people and be among people and see the Spirit moving 
okay, see the Spirit moving. Well, you know, I see the Spirit moving even as we minister here. He's moving in me. He's moving in you. Hallelujah. Praise God. When I see more people coming online, I see the Spirit moving. It's not about being in a crowd of people. Uh, I hear a lot of people say, man, the Holy Ghost sure did move. That choir sure did sing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost might not have been anywhere near that choir. They just sang. They determined they were going to sing on a Sunday. Okay, now I'm not putting your choir down. I'm not putting your musician down. But, you know, a lot of people are really, we have been ignorantly trained in what the Holy Spirit is or who he is. And we've been trained that, you know, the preacher, uh, when, when the preacher closes his book, can't, uh-oh, he didn't close the book. That was when you elbow your neighbors you're sitting next to in church. He, he uh-oh, he closed the book. He's getting ready to preach now. Ladies, no, he's not getting ready to preach. He's getting ready to go back. He's, he's got, getting ready to go into self in many cases, okay, if he closed the book. If he closed the book, that means he, he's no longer talking about what's in the book. And unless he has a spirit of property, prophecy and the gift of the Holy Spirit in him, he's going to give you a whole lot of self and, and emotionalism and, 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 and a lot of worldliness. And so a lot of people are going to church, and they, they, they have to have that worldliness. They've got to have that emotion. And, and so when, once, here's what... Here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Once church is over, you don't have anything. You're empty. You're just as empty as you were when you first went because after all the enthusiasm is over, all the sweating and the straining, what word is there that has gripped your heart to change your lifestyle? What, what word is there in you that uh, is going to make you go home and love your husband uh, better or love your wife better? What word is there in you that's going to help you to stop hating on your neighbor and, and start loving on your neighbor? What word is there in you that's going to uh, uh, cause you to spend some of the money you have for groceries and buy your neighbor some groceries because your neighbor is unemployed? Amen. So, Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a long way to go in the church, and we've got a long way to go in recognizing the Holy Spirit, and we've got a long way to go in acknowledging the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at um, what some of what Dr. Tozer says to us. I said I was going to 264. Did I say that? Yes, I did. Well, we'd start uh, somewhere near there. There's a great modern area. This is where I wanted to be, 267. There is a great modern era, listen to this, which I want to mention. It is that the coming of the Spirit happened once for all. Listen to this, because there are a lot of people in the church who believe this. They have been taught this. Many of our seminaries teach this, many Bible schools teach this, and that's why people are coming out of seminaries and Bible schools with degrees, but no knowledge of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this again. There is a great modern era which I want to mention. It is that the coming of the Spirit happened once for all, that the individual Christian is not affected by it. It is like the birth of Christ which happened once for all, and the most excellent sermon on the birth of Christ would never have, have that birth repeated. And all the prayers in the wide world would never have Christ born again of the Virgin Mary. It is, they say, like the death and resurrection of Christ, never to be repeated. This error, what error? The modern error that the coming of the Spirit happened once for all that the Spirit of God was poured out on the day of Pentecost one time for all times. This error asserts that the coming of the Holy Spirit is an historic thing, an advance in the dispensational workings of God, but that it is all settled now and we need give no further thought to it. It is all here and we have it all. And if we believe in Christ, that is it, and there isn't anything more. 
In other words, there are many Christians who believe that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church one time. It's historical. It happens. It's recorded in Acts chapter 2. And they say that's all we need. All you need now is to believe in Christ. And, and Tozer does a good job in his book clearing this up. And, um, you know, there are a lot of books written, but you've got to read in order to get to some of it. And, 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 and just take the Bible. The Bible is the greatest book ever written. How can you be a pastor or a preacher or a teacher and tell people they do not need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Well, the whole New Testament, starting with the book of Acts, is all about the works of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit moved in the church and moved in the lives of the people and, 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 and how uh, the apostles could not do anything without the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them to wait and tarry in Jerusalem. Now, and, now the apostles are dead, ladies and gentlemen. There's not a one of them alive. They're no longer with us. And we've got to face greater things than the apostles had to face. We've got to face even greater numbers of unsaved people than the apostles had to face. We've got to go to places where the apostles cannot go because the apostles are dead. And how are we to do and accomplish what God wants us to do without the Holy Spirit? So those who say, well, the Holy Spirit was poured out once upon the church, and, 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 and that was for... At that time, and that was historical, and we don't need the Holy Spirit now. All you need is to believe in Jesus. No. No. That's so erroneous. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 is still alive. Ephesians 5.18 is still alive. Let me read it to you. Let me see if it's still. Let me see. I'm looking, uh, Karen, to see if Ephesians 5.18 is still in my Bible. Maybe uh, somebody came and erased it last night. And let me check. Oh, it's still here. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. 19 says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's evidence of the Holy Spirit filled life. You're not drunk with wine. You're filled with the Spirit. You're singing to yourselves. You've got a, an encouraging word, an encouraging song for others. Even in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of a coronavirus, you're speaking psalms and giving God the worship and the praise because the Spirit man dwells in you and you're honoring God and you're magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's the spirit-filled person. The spirit-filled person is not the one who lays hand on the sick person, sick person on Sunday in church, and then you find them at that same preacher at the casino cussing and, 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 and gambling at the casino on Wednesday. That is not the spirit-filled person. The spirit-filled person is continuously operating in the power of God and allowing the power of God to operate in him or her. And so, um, Tozer continues, It's the promise of the Father with all, with all its intended riches of spiritual grace and power intended to be for first century Christians only. Does the new birth, which the first century Christians have to have, suffice for all other Christians? Or is the new birth with which they had to have that which we have to have? Does the new birth have to be repeated in each Christian before it is valid? Or did that first church get born again for us? Can you get born again by proxy? The fact that those first 120 were born again, does that mean that we don't have to be? Now you answer me. That's what Tozer says. You say, no, certainly we agree that everybody has to have the new birth for himself individually. All right. If that is true, and it is, is the fullness of the Spirit which those first Christians received enough? Does that work for you and me? They had the fullness. Now they are dead. Does the fact that they were filled avail for me? You answer that question. Again, I want to ask you, 
Will a meal, check this out, let's get practical. Will a meal, would a meal eaten by St. Peter in the year 33 A.D. nourish me today? Hmm? <laughs> would a good meal of barley cakes and milk and honey spread on a barley cake, a good meal for a good Jew in Peter's day, nourish me today? No. Peter is dead. And I, and I cannot be mer nourished by what Peter ate. Would the fullness of the Holy Ghost that Peter got in the upper chamber do for me today? Or must I receive individually what Peter received? What value would the fullness of the Spirit in the church in Jerusalem have for us today if it was done over there Robert, once for all and we can't have the same thing here? We're separated by 5,000 miles of water and by 1,900 years of time. Now what? That happened to them can possibly avail for us. I want to ask you some more questions. This is uh, A.W. Tozer in his book, How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you see any similarity between the average one of us Christians buzzing around Chicago and those apostles? Any similarity? Are you ready to believe that we have just what they had and that every believer in Chicago who accepts the Bible and is converted immediately into and now enjoys and possesses exactly what they did back there? Surely you know better than that. This modern fundamentalism as we know it and of which we are a part, is, is it a satisfactory fulfillment of the expectations raised by the Father in Christ. Our Father who is in heaven raised certain high expectations of what he was going to do for his redeemed people. When his son came to redeem those people, he heightened those expectations, raised them, clarified them, extended them, enlarged them, and emphasized them. He raised an expectation that was simply beyond words, too wonderful and beautiful and thrilling to imagine. I want to ask you, is this level of Christianity, which we fundamentalists in this city now enjoy what he meant by what he said? Listen, brother, our Lord Jesus Christ, let me go back. Listen, brother, our Lord Jesus Christ advertised that he was going away to the Father, and he was going to send back for his people a wonderful gift. And he said, stay right here until it comes. Because it would be the difference between failure and success to you. That's what Jesus said. Stay right here. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until I send the promise from the Father. Then the Spirit came. And I'm reading from Tozer's book, How to Be Filled with the Holy Ghost. You can download this um, via... Uh, Kindle, then the Spirit came. Uh, please mute your phone, everybody. Make sure your phone is muted because there's a disturbance in the background. Everybody, make sure your phone is muted. Press star six, star six. Thank you very much. Then the Spirit came. Was he equal to the advertising? Did they say, is this all he meant? Oh, it is disappointing. No. The scripture says they wondered. The word wonder is in their mouths and hearts. He gave so much more than he promised. Because words were the promise and the Holy Ghost was the fulfillment. In other words, God, Jesus made a promise. But God sent even more than what he promised. The simple fact is that we believers are not up to what he gave us reason to expect. The only honest thing to do is admit this and do something about it. And this is for every believer. I'm going to read this again. The simple fact is that we believers are not up to what he gave us reason to expect. The only honest thing is to only honest thing to do is admit this and do something about it. In other words, admit that we are not what we're in, we're supposed to be. Admit it. There certainly has been a vast breakdown somewhere between promise and fulfillment. That breakdown is not with our Heavenly Father, for he always gives more than he promises. Now, I'm going to ask you that you reverently ponder this. And, and, and Tozer asked 
very gently and politely that we ponder his questions. And his question is, are you where you're supposed to be with God? Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? If you haven't been baptized, why haven't you? You've been a Christian for 40 years. You've been going to church for 40 years. You've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've been a Christian for 10 years. You're not spirit-filled. Your pastor doesn't preach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but yet you sit up under him every Sunday. And you've been doing that for the last 30, 40 years. And, and so A.W. Tozer is asking, why don't you have what God promised that you have? And so what do we have? We have, we have, we have millions of Christians running around America today afraid of a coronavirus. Millions of, believe, millions of churches afraid. People don't know what to do. I can't go to church. I don't know what to do. We've got thousands of pastors now trying to do online ministry. And we've got uh, 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 thousands of divas who uh, can't sing their songs on Sunday, so they're now on Facebook singing songs. But how many people do we have who are spirit-filled, who are, 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 are confident enough in the Lord Jesus Christ that all these things, this devastation, this death, and the destruction going on around us, this too shall pass. How many people really are, are spirit-filled enough and trust God enough that uh, they realize that no weapon formed against me shall prosper? How many people do we really have who can read Psalm 91 every day and say, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty? How many people can really say, Though a, a thousand fall at, at my right hand and ten thousand on my left side, other side, yet no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. How many people can really speak that and believe that God is going to fulfill what he promises? And so, so A.W. Tozer challenges the body of Christ. He says, hey, God has made promises to us. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. But he says, are you really ready to be filled. And, and, and he challenges those who are willing to say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Are you real, do you really know what you're saying? Are you really ready to move over and let Jesus take over? Are you really ready to let the Holy Spirit show you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same what you're to do? Who are you to talk with? Where you're to go? Are you really willing to 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 lay your goals aside and say, Lord, what is it you have me to do? Tozer challenges every one of us, and 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 the Bible promises that that we can do all things through Christ. Philippians chapter 4. We can do all things through Christ. There is nothing impossible with Jesus Christ. If God has given you a, 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 a vision, a mission, he will accomplish it. And, 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 and we don't have to go and form committees and, 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 and become politically correct or do this or sell our soul to make these things happen. If God has spoken to us, he will hasten his word to perform it. But God has a, an expectation of you and me, and he expects us to seek him in the word of God. Seek the Holy Ghost in the word of God. The Holy Ghost is not just going to pop out of heaven and pop into you because you say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is going to search you and try you. David, King David says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not going to uh, abound in you and me if we can insist on hiding our secret sins uh, to our wife or our husband or our children or even the church. The Holy Spirit is not going to live and, and fill the person whose motives are not pure. 
the Holy Spirit is not going to indwell and be powerful in the person who has made uh, the Republican Party their idol or the Democratic Party their, their idol or, or have people in higher positions than Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is only going to live in those vessels, in those persons who are willing to, to, to uh, sell themselves out, empty themselves, empty themselves so they can be filled with the power of God for one purpose, ladies and gentlemen. One purpose, and that purpose is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you really ready? Are you really ready to be filled with the Holy Ghost? But you're not ready to glorify Jesus? How many of you are afraid to talk to your neighbors about Jesus? How many of you are afraid to talk about Jesus in your own household? How many of you are afraid to take a stand in your community, even in your church? How many of you still uh, allow those bingo games to go on in your church? How many of you still... Uh, no, you know, you, your pastor, you know, he preaches well on Sunday, but he got a drinking problem. How many of you still can't confront him or can't confront that deacon or that steward or that trustee? How many of you still blink your eye at the things uh, that are ungodly in the church, and yet you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? God is not someone to play with, ladies and gentlemen. We find in, in the Old Testament, in that historical time, 120 people obeyed Jesus. Jesus had a calling on their lives. They had, he had great ministry in store for each one of them. And he said, but before you go out and do ministry, before you uh, start making your own uh, 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 Facebook videos or your own YouTubes or, 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 or writing your books or or, or starting your online church or your own business, before you do that, tarry for the Holy Spirit. Let him come and fill you and let him guide you into all truth. And they waited. The apostles waited on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How many of you are really, really, I'm asking you, I'm challenging you, how many of you are really willing to wait on the Holy Spirit? How many of you are willing today, tonight? I'm talking to you ministers out there, you pastors, you teachers, preachers. Uh, those, of you who, those of you who have a uh, great job to do in the church, you're head of committees, you're, 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 you're in charge of this program. How many of you really are willing to put that program on hold and say, Lord, I want to be filled with your spirit so that you can show me how to do this so that Jesus gets the glory and honor. How many of you are willing, uh, uh, after you preach a great sermon or taught a great lesson or, or pulled off a great thing in the church, how many of you are willing to say to God be the glory? And, 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 and if somebody else gets all the credit, you're willing to say to God be the glory, hallelujah, anyhow, without being offended? You see, it's all about glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. And when these apostles realized the charge that the Lord Jesus had placed on them, and then when, when, when they heard him say before he ascended into heaven, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he told them, before you do that, you wait for the power. How many of you have the power, but you won't, don't want to take it to black people? How many of you have the power, but you don't want to take the, the gospel to his family? How many of you got the power, but you don't want to take the gospel to the Muslims? How many of you got the power? How many of you uh, uh, have, have a charge on your life? Please, mute your phone. Mute your phone. Star six, thank you. Star six. Star six. Star six. Star six. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that you know that you know that if you if you haven't muted your phone, then you're you're probably causing the disturbance. 
and this is not the time to disturb me because cause we're ready to bring this thing home. Amen? God has a calling on us, and God has a prescription in the Bible to help us to complete what he wants us to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have 30, 40 years. We don't have a whole lot of time to do what we've done in the last 30, 40 years. Sit up, take anything coming down the pike in the church, not making any difference for Jesus Christ. The time is winding up, and tens of thousands of people are dying in this nation alone, hundreds of thousands all over the world. There is... Uh, running out of time, running out of time, and God wants to see us do something and not just talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants us to act like we're filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants to Use us to the praise of his glory. And he wants to do it now. But as A.W. Tozer said, he said it mildly in his book. I'm, I'm a little rough-edged, and I'm challenging every one of you. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm challenging myself. So let's get rid of all that stuff that's preventing the Lord from using us. Get rid of the hatred. Get rid of the bitterness. Get rid of the doubt and unbelief. Get rid of the selfishness. Get rid of the pride. The Holy Spirit cannot fill a vessel that is proud. And every one of us has to take a good look and humble ourselves. And, and, and God gives us a prescription in in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. You talking about a great change that'll take place in this nation and in the nations if believers would humble ourselves starting with me it starts with me i've got to i can't be selfish i can't have to i can't have my way it it can't be my way or the highway i've got some adjustments to make if i expect to live the holy spirit life and you've got some adjustments and then as we uh carefully very carefully unpackage this whole thing last week and i'll do it again but i won't take that much time the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That verb, filled, means continuous action. In other words, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. A good interpretation of that scripture is, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the aorist tense in the Greek language, A-O-R-I-S-T. It's the aorist tense. It's a continuous filling. It's, it's not a one-time thing. Yes, the disciples received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but when you read further in Acts, Acts chapter 4, they were filled again. And, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, when, when they, Acts chapter 13, when, when those apostles laid hands on Paul and, and Barnabas, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit wants to continue to fill you and me. Daily fillings, daily filling, continuously, aorist tense, continuously filling us with the Spirit, and at the same time, continuously uh, uh, purging us of self continue uh, 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 destroying self. We've got to continue uh, to uh, destroy our own uh, selfish desires and our own goals. And uh, it's got to be my way, my way or the highway. No, there's only one way, and that's Jesus' way. 
and we've got to humble ourselves. And then when we humble ourselves, how do you do, do this? By repenting? And, and, and how, do you, how else do you do it? By every time Satan puts an idea in your, your head, well, I can, do, uh, I can chair that committee better than he can, or I can preach better than him, or I can do an online church better than Pastor Carter, then you've got to cast down those imaginations because those are vain imaginations. Those are things that cause strife. Let's build up the body of Christ. If you see brother so-and-so wanting to do online church, show him how he can do it and help him out. Okay? If he needs a headset and he can't afford it, you buy him a headset. You go on Amazon and send him one for thirty-nine ninety-five. Okay? A plug-in. That way his sound is better. It's finer, finer tuned. And instead of trying to uh, put a person down, okay, so we, we empty ourselves of self so that we can promote the other person. Why? To the glory of Jesus. So that Jesus Christ is glorified. If brother so-and-so in California is doing this, or my friend uh, Andrew Holtz in Battle Creek, Michigan, we're going to be talking about uh, the online church next week, he and I, on a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, we're, I'm going to help him, and then he's going to help others. It's to the glorifying of Jesus Christ in our lives. Not that so-and-so in California gets the credit or Andy Holtz gets the praise or Gene Bratton gets the credit. It's give Jesus the credit as he moves throughout the body of Christ. As, as Victor Sherba uh, 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 promotes his online church in Mombasa, Kenya, and as Pastor Eunice does her, uh, she's starting off on the online church in Kenya, and as Elijah uh, and others uh, do online church ministry in Kenya, and as Bishop Davis instructs people and trains them for online church service in, in Jamaica, then we ought to pray for them, and, and if we can help them with the, any of their needs, then we do so. Why? Because we want to give Jesus the glory. It's not about us. It's not about building a mega church. It's not building uh, a lot of followers. It's not getting a whole lot of likes and dislikes. It's all to glorify the Lord Jesus and what he has done and who he is. and He's Lord of lords and King of kings. And so let us all, uh, uh, as we look into going into another lesson next week, of a, a four-part series, next week is number three, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm just laying a whole foundation right now. But then we're just going to, uh, at a certain point, might be next week, might be the fourth week, I'm going to lay hands on you all. I'm going to lay hands on you all by proxy and over the phone. Over the phone, many people, by way of the phone or the internet, internet, many people are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're building up to that point. But in the meantime, we all have our homework. Anytime selfishness rises up in any of us, we've got to cast down vain imaginations. Anytime bitter thoughts about other people come up, we've got to cast down those bitter thoughts. Now, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of work to do. If I'm too continuously be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've got my job cut out for me every day, ladies and gentlemen. And we're to walk by faith and not by sight. We're to walk in love towards one another. So we've got our assignments. Praise God. We've got our assignments. Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So let's continue. Let's seek God. Let's uh, read the reread the scriptures. Read Acts chapter two, and then read the whole book of Acts. Look at how these men and women could not operate without the Holy Ghost. And if they could not operate without the Holy Ghost, how can we? How can we? How can we survive? We cannot. We cannot. And, and, and some of these folks we know, you know, and they're preaching against the Holy Ghost, and they got mega churches, a lot of followers. They're deceiving a lot of people. Be true to God. Trust the Lord. Take Him at His word. Love the Lord with all your heart.
keep your heart pure and stay open <coughs> for the fullness of the Spirit. God will bless you. <coughs> Pollen time in Georgia. Take over for a moment, Gene Bratton. Yes, we thank you. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Great. So we all have assignments, too, to be Holy Ghost filled, to be those Christians who are full of the power that Jesus sent down on Pentecost. That's our job, so that we can get out there and, and save souls in the name of Jesus. We're in, a, we're in a dark world. It's our job to bring light. And Pastor Carter, we're going to pray about those allergies. Praise God. Yes. Pray about allergies, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just ask that you clear Pastor Carter's nasal passages, God, in his throat so that he doesn't have the post-nasal drip that, Father God, makes him call. Father God, we're also going to ask that you, Father God, just give him the wisdom for remedies to just prevent this, because we know, Father, that in you is all wisdom, and you bring health and cure, so we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I've got the Flonase up in my medicine cabinet. My doctor told me to take it, so I forgot, you know, I, I need to be obedient. Amen? Amen. And you know, there's something very simple that you can do. How about sipping water to keep your throat clear? <laughs> That's yes, ma'am. Answers from God are simple. <laughs> it, yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Jane. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I hope uh, this um, message clarified a lot for us because we need to be where the Lord wants us to be. And He's He's ready. He's ready. Yeah. I mean... He's ready. The body of Christ can flip this nation upside down. By the way, when this coronavirus thing is over, America will never be the same. That's right. Amen. And the world will not be the same. Ladies and gentlemen, God's getting us ready. When this coronavirus thing is over, this world will not be the same world. That's true. Yeah. And, and, yes. and, and for those who... who have the heart to receive Jesus. Do it now. If you're not saved, you need to get saved now. Ask Jesus Christ into your life right now and receive him by faith. Then after you receive Jesus, yes, seek him. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because when this coronavirus is declared gone, we're living in a brand new, different kind of world, politics won't be the same. Your lifestyle will not be the same. And so, so uh, uh, my friends, a lot of people who are panicking now, I say to you, get filled with the Holy Spirit, study the Word, draw nigh to the Lord, spend much more time in prayer, and trust the Lord to guide you day by day. Because... Yeah. Even more terrible times will come after this virus is over. These are the last days. But God has given us such a comfort, such a peace with the, with the gift of salvation. We're in this world, but we're not of the world. And then, yeah. and then he has promised us his spirit to fill us and guide us into all truth. We are overcomers. The Bible teaches us that we overcome the world by the blood of the Lamb, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So, in other words, I'm saying to you, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Things are going to get worse. But 
get into that place where you have peace in your heart that no matter what comes down the pike, you've got the Spirit of God inside of you. And, and teach your family. Share that with your family, your friends. Even some of you are going to have to go to your, back to your churches and teach them about the peace of God. Because after this coronavirus is over, churches are going to come up with all kinds of gimmicks. You, I can see it now. They, they're going to come with, up with all kinds of gimmicks and all kinds of stuff, and much of it is not going to be of the Lord. But you, who know the Holy Spirit and are Spirit-led, you can help the church, the body of Christ, to be what Christ wants us to be to the glory and honor of God. So we're just in the beginning of seeing difficult times, and God is preparing us. God is preparing us to be co-rulers with him in his kingdom. And so... Let's yield yeah. to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Let's surrender. Let's get rid of this stubbornness, this rebellion, this pride. Okay? Let's go to your medicine cabinet, get that flonase, and take that nasal spray. <laughs> Stop that uh, uh, post nasal drip from choking you up while you're trying to teach the gospel. Stop being so stubborn, Leroy Carter. <laughs> and Amen? sip some water. And sip some water. <laughs> I'm just sipping, sipping. Look, you see this bottle here. <laughs> Praise God, but I'll sip some more. Amen. <laughs> and, let's, and most of all, let's love one another. Yeah. Love one another. Don't give time for hatred or anger. Love one another. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. You can tell when someone's really spirit-filled by what they say, how they talk. Okay? And, and, and let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So we've got a, we've got some work to do, and God wants us. He wants us to be there. So I thank God for this series. Next week we're going to take a, a look at we're gonna, we're going to focus more on the subject. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. When um, Paul went up to a group of followers of John the Baptist, and uh, they had received Jesus Christ as their Savior, Paul asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost? They said, we'll need, we don't even know who he is. We haven't even heard about him. And Paul taught them about the Holy Spirit. And then he said, receive the Holy Spirit. He spoke the words. And they received the Holy Spirit. And God will use your voice as a prophetic voice. Among other believers, God can use you and me as prophetic voices. And we can go. We can go to our family. We can go to our friends. We can go to other believers and, and speak the words, receive the Holy Spirit. And if they're willing to receive, they will get baptized. They will get filled with the Holy Ghost. So it'll get even more exciting as we go into next week. Amen. Any questions, anybody? I see my brother-in-law, Bill Meek, from out there in North Villa, Lake Villa, Illinois. Bill, come on, say hello to me. Bill probably muted his phone. Press star. Star six. And come on, say hello. I see Bill Meek. I see CK. CK. Now, C.K. started this whole thing, y'all, so let's hear, what, <clears throat> let's hear from C.K. Hi. Um, tonight, kind of what came to me was God was saying, remove the man factor with the God factor. And that he was saying that now, without the demands of the world going to and fro, Move to God's presence. No excuses now. And in regard to the churches, he's saying shine the light because some churches are basically motivational speakers while other churches are God-directed. 
So that's basically what he was telling me. Today. Amen. Amen. So he's saying that you know this is a this is a time of uh, reproof that you know we had become so busy with the world that we hadn't we didn't have room for God, and now we have no excuse because He has cleared the path. He has cleared the path. I like that, CK. I like that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise hey, God. Hey, Leroy, I'm back. Okay. Okay. Bill, is that Bill? Yeah, what's up, brother? Hey, brother-in-law, how you doing? Doing great, man. Great to good, hear your good, voice. Good, good to hear your voice, too. I, I hope this series is helping you, man. It's awesome. Me, Tina, and Freddie were on it. Okay, okay. I will email you the the recording, all righty? Awesome, man. Thank you so okay. much, Leroy. Hey, give my love to everybody, okay? I will, buddy. God bless okay. you. Hey, God bless you, too, man. Thank you. Thank you. That's my brother-in-law, Bill Meek, Lake Villa, Illinois. Praise God. We were up there about a year ago. It was April of last year when we visited with them. CK, thank you so much. Anything else? Uh, what else has come to you? That's, that's basically it. I feel like uh, God's kind of tossed us the ball and where to run with it. And he's cleared the path, and so put your action where your whatever is, whatever that thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, CK is going to make football players out of all of us, okay? <laughs> she's going to pass. The, she's going to flip the ball to us. Okay, Gene Bratton, you got to run down field. you gotta, you got to juke and dis, dis those defending backs, okay? All right. Uh, Jackie Carter, you got to run with it, man. You Don't let them tackle you. Okay. CK, did you play football when you were growing up? No. <laughs> Little girls didn't play football in Texas, did yeah, they? Girls weren't even allowed to, you know, do much of any, what they classified as boy sports, you know. Basketball, where I was at, was allowed for girls, but. No and, football. Uh-uh. Hey, CK, <laughs> when you went to high school, when you and I went to high school, girls couldn't even, in basketball, girls' basketball, some of them couldn't even cross half court, could they? That, that's exactly the kind of basketball I played. <laughs> okay. Okay, you had six players on the court. Three of them could cross the half court line. Three of them could not. Okay, okay. We're going back back in the day. And I know Jean Bratton's laughing because she she said, "Well, it wasn't that wasn't that way when I played." Jean Bratton played played basketball during the time of mm, Kobe Bryant's daddy went to school with Jean Bratton. Yeah, Joe Joe Bryant. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. He sure okay. did. We had classes together. Okay. 